Hello everyone, thank you for joining us in this video again. So today we are going to have a chat with a chartered accountant and in this uh, section that I'm hosting, we will uh, try to uncover all the secrets as well as the need to know uh, about accounting. So how? Uh, so what are the uh, do's and don'ts about accounting in your business as entrepreneurs that is actually very important. And we are very happy and very honored to have Jolene join us in this discussion today. Jolene is a very, very experienced uh, person in this field. Perhaps I'll allow Jolene to introduce herself and share with you guys uh, some of her experiences and who she is. Jolene, would you like to uh, do a self-introduction? Yes, sure. Thank you, Ken. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jolene. Um, like Ken has mentioned, I'm a chartered accountant. I've been in accounting line for 15 years so far uh, in auditing, accounting, forensic and I'm also having my own consultancy firm now on uh, accounting services. Yes, so I uh, understand from Ken today we are sharing on GST. Yes, that's right. Yes. So the topic mm -hmm. that we want to talk about today is that because a lot of entrepreneurs and business mm -hmm. owners out there, right? one thing I realize is that they they, they, they are always considering, okay, now I started a new business already. Should mm -hmm. I get myself GST registered? Mm -hmm. uh, when should I get myself GST registered? Why should I get myself GST registered? So, uh, Jolene, would you be able to share with us uh, some mm -hmm. of the scenarios or reasons uh, why companies should or should not get themselves GST registered? Does it mean that if you are GST registered, you are more credible? And does it mean the other way around? If you are not GST registered, then mm. you are not credible. I think these are some of the questions that many of the entrepreneurs out there would like to find out. Okay. Mm. Um, sharing from my opinion, um, basically, as a matter of fact, um, that um, you can actually there's a compulsory GST registration and a voluntary. Mm. Compulsory when your revenue has exceed one million, whether retrospectively or um, prospectively, that means retrospective last 12 months, your revenue has exceeded 1 million, then you must register for GST. So this is no choice, you must register. Correct. I so or you actually expect for the next, within next 12 months, you will exceed 1 million revenue. So it's also, com this is considered compulsory. Mm. Yes. Voluntary is when um, there is no, uh, I didn't meet the 1 million benchmark but for my business I have a lot of uh, all my suppliers or most of my suppliers are GST registered and mm. I have to pay GST to them mm. if I am GST registered I can actually claim back this GST but okay. of course being GST registered I also have to charge GST to my customers mm. Mm. Yes. Okay. and uh, there, there are pro and cons Pro is definitely because I can claim back, I saved on my supplier or my um, purchase. But because of GST, I also have to charge higher to my customers. Mm -hmm. So oh, if your customers oh, oh, oh. are very uh, price sensitive, comparing yourself as a GST registered and another company that is not GST registered, mm -hmm. um, you have to consider this whether it is worth it's worth being registered voluntarily. Mm. I see. So, so it's a it's a double-edged sword. In one mm. way, you are able to claim back um, the GSC that you have paid to your supplier. In the mm. other way, you have to charge to your uh, clients GSC as well. Yes. So claim back seven percent. Let's say you buy at a hundred dollars. Mm. So the supplier charge you seven dollars for GSC. Now you sell mm. hundred and fifty. You have to charge your client hundred and fifty dollars plus seven percent of 150 Correct. so viewers you do the balance um mm -hmm. is that going to be good for you not good for you i think you have to do some calculations and of course mm -hmm. do some comparison in terms of your market competitors what price they are selling at are they charging gsd that kind of thing all right yes mm -hmm. and uh, there are also different criteria. for example if you are selling dealing with uh overseas customers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like for example in shipping line um, their services are generally 0% rated. So 
So if it's all or majority 0% return, actually you can apply to IRAS for an exemption for GST, GST registration, even if you already hit the 1 million benchmark. I see. So, so this applies to all the companies that are generally selling most of their services to overseas clients. Mm. So these are the people who, who may be able to apply for Myra saying, that, okay, because my target audience generally, they are not Singaporeans or mm. local residents. So uh, we would like to opt out of the GST. But if let's say they hit the $1 million mark, they yeah. sell mostly to overseas clients, but yes. they have a small pocket that is selling to local residents. Mm. Uh, in that case, how do we measure that? Um, then they will actually need to know how much is the local market, what is the revenue like. If it's generally, um, mostly, like I say, mostly uh, overseas, you can still get the exemption. But uh, of course, the exemption is an application. It's whether you can get approved. Yeah. So um, having said that, because you are exempt from GSD, when you purchase, you also cannot claim back the GST. Yeah, ah. it just probably saved you on the uh, re- the application fees for you to get your staff or employ an external professional to submit your GST for you. Hmm. Save mm-hmm. on the administrative cost. I see. I see. I do know of companies who are GST registered, so they yeah. have to charge that seven percent to their clients in Singapore, but mm-hmm. they also do exports. Uh, but when they do the export, they don't have to charge their clients from overseas that 7% GST. How does this work? Um, how does this work? Exporting. Hmm. Uh, there will still be certain level of uh, tax, but it's not fought under GST. I see. I, see. Yeah, I need to make a clause here. I need to check on this. Okay. Mm. Okay. okay. Sure. Yes. So, because regulations change very mm. regularly, right? So, mm. um, actually, this is actually one of the wonderful things uh, that uh, we would like to be able to uh, bring to our viewers, mm. uh, which is um, every now and then when there are new regulations coming out from maybe IRA side, uh, we would like to maybe take that little topic and then mm. talk about it and then talk about maybe if you are an entrepreneur, if you are a business, how does mm. it affect you? Uh, do you need to be worried? Uh, what are the preparations that you need to do so viewers out there if let's say you want to get uh, updates like that in the future uh, do subscribe to our channel because we will be regularly uh, releasing uh, discussion videos like that we take one topic and then we try to talk about it um, and hopefully it answers uh, quite a number of our viewers questions so um, is there any other thing that you would like to share about GST with us Yes, okay, uh, for GST submission, you can actually opt to choose on a monthly, quarterly or yearly basis. Hmm. So it depends on the volume of transactions that you have, the kind of administrative cost that you are looking into. And of course, um, it also depends on your cash flow. For some companies, uh, they would like to claim back their GST or it is on a net receivable status, they will want to get back their money faster. So they are applying for a monthly submission basis. Mm. Yeah, and uh, if you have more of um, tax to pay, more GST payable, uh, you may want to uh, apply for a quarterly or a yearly basis, so you don't have to pay out every month. I see, I see. So, so is this kind of like on the uh, approval basis? Meaning to mm-hmm. say, uh, whether they go by monthly, quarterly, half yearly, mm-hmm. yearly, mm-hmm. Uh, they have to apply with IRAS, and then only upon approval, then they will be able to go in those uh, frequencies. Is that right? Yes. Or is it because- by default? Uh, is there like certain default kind of thing? If let's say they are GST registered, then uh, by default is monthly or quarterly. Uh, not exactly, because when you apply for GST registration mm-hmm. in the form, they will get you to choose which option you would prefer the frequency of submission i see mm-hmm. so usually they will give it to us based on our preference yes correct mm. 
Okay. Oh yeah, I just thought about I just thought about another point. So mm-hmm. I just wanted to see if you would be able to give us some advice, because mm-hmm. previously when I was um, prospecting some uh, commercial properties, mm-hmm. um, one of the ideas that uh, was being discussed back then was that if let's say we were to buy commercial property, sometimes commercial properties, um, uh, be it whether you purchase or be it whether you rent it, comes with GST. Mm. So what people does is that they'll register a separate uh, business entity and then get the business entity registered as a GST company mm-hmm. and then they use it to purchase that property or to use it to rent that property and then they are able to claim back that 7% GST that they are being charged by their landlord or by their seller. Mm. Is that the correct practice or is that not the correct practice to do? Uh, it depends on the type of company you're looking at. If I am setting up a company for investment purposes. Mm. Yes, so basically uh, that's what companies do like investment holding. They mm. use this company to acquire an asset. Mm. Then um, the other companies will fall under this holding company. Mm. Yeah. But having said that means you have more uh, filing applications that you may have to do like for holding investment company uh, to acquire what kind of um, filing you may have to do yeah so there will be other administrative considerations to do and once you start to become a holding company um, chances mm-hmm. are you would have to because if you have got several companies down below you Mm. then you would have to do uh, accounts consolidation and all these things as well. Yes, so so uh, do expect the administrative fee to be slightly more. Mm. Mm. Yes. So um, another thing is that uh, because now we are talking about holding company. Ma. Mm. So if let's say the if let's say the entrepreneur uh, don't have so many companies, all he wants to do is I just want to buy this property or I just want to rent this property and then he wants to save on the GST. Can he just register one company standalone just to do that? Or this is not allowed? Uh, I don't see that it is not allowed, but it is very obvious that you are trying to play with the system. I see. Yeah. Um, I am not sure back end uh, whether IRS will do such uh, sampling test or check on this company. If your intention of this company is just to rent uh, uh, an office and with no business activity. Mm. Mm. I see. Yes. So, so meaning to say legally there is nothing wrong but mm. however it doesn't mean that um, IRAS will not come over and to ask questions and to uh, find out more about what you're doing, that kind of thing. Yes, because uh, we set up companies for for business purposes with mm. some business activities. Mm. And if your business activities, there's no business activities per se, and it's solely to so-called avoid tax. Mm. Uh, it's a totally different thing. Yeah, avoiding tax and uh, reducing with, uh, you had to, to have a tax agent to help you design and plan for, for tax planning is totally different thing. So tax avoidance is uh, a no-no and I must definitely come after you. I see, I see. Okay, so viewers out there, do take note about this. We probably cannot give you any advice in this area. Um, mm-hmm. So perhaps you might want to do your own research or if let's say you need Jolene to give you more advice, we will probably uh, include an inquiry link below so that if let's say uh, you want to talk to Jolene, then do click on the inquiry link, send Jolene an inquiry and then you all can take this conversation offline and find out more uh, in this area. So Jolene, is there any other thing else that you would like to add on to the topic itself? Uh, so far, no, but if there's any queries, yes, like say, please contact me on the link below. Sure. So, uh, viewers, that's about it for GST. Um, uh, this is how you may uh, want or do not want to get yourself registered um, as a GST company. So, it really depends on the situation. Now, do uh, stay tuned for our next video. We will be with you again uh, shortly. See you guys. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Mm.